We are now in the first half of August. This is the time Elon Musk once guessed Starship Flight 10 could launch. His earlier guess was for mid-August. But until now, all we had were estimates without a set date or exact time. Now we have something more certain. A notice from the United States Coast Guard to local mariners gives us a clear time frame. This notice shows there will be super heavy rocket activity in the Gulf of Mexico near the Texas coast. This matches with work going on at SpaceX's Starbase. According to the notice, Starship Flight 10 is planned for a launch between the 16th and 22nd of August. The launch hours are planned around midday in Texas. This should give a good view of both stage separation and landings, which will help the public and engineers observe everything. But this new time frame shows the launch will happen later than Musk's mid-August guess. This puts Flight 10 in the second half of the month. Even this new window might change depending on the remaining work for Ship 37. Earlier tests for Ship 37 seemed to go well on the outside, but data from inside the vehicle showed a problem with one of its vacuum engines. Because of this, SpaceX replaced that engine. Replacing an engine is not a small job. It needs careful checks, new settings, and another round of static fire testing. For this testing, the suborbital test stand has been put back in place, and new connection pipes have been added to the mount. This shows that SpaceX is almost ready to test Ship 37 again. If all goes well, Ship 37 might return to the test pad as early as next week for the second set of tests. The testing might be done in only a day or two, especially if SpaceX only does a full engine static fire instead of repeating every small check. If this retest works, Ship 37 will be moved back to the large assembly building for final launch preparations. This includes close inspections, adding the payload and installing the flight termination system. These steps may take about three to four days. After this, the ship can be called ready for flight and moved to the launch pad to be stacked on top of Booster 16. Booster 16 is already at the launch site and is believed to be ready to support Flight 10 once Ship 37 is ready. But looking at the current plan, the soonest possible launch might be toward the end of August. That is still a quick turnaround when we think about the delays after the Ship 36 incident. Even with that setback, SpaceX has worked hard to keep things moving, while still following strong safety and quality rules. Flight 10 needs to go well. This will prove that the problems from the last launch have been fixed. It will also help keep the timeline for NASA's Human Landing System program on schedule. Now that we know the launch window and see progress, my own guess for launch day would be the 21st of August. The timing for Flight 10 also depends on Booster 16, but it seems less likely to cause delays. This is because Booster 16 has already finished most of its work. On the morning of August 6th, Booster 16 was moved from the large assembly building to the rocket garden. It had been in the building for nearly two months for outfitting, and now has the hot staging section fully installed. While outside, one of its grid fins was rotated, showing that its movement system is working. We do not know if the flight termination system is already installed, but if not, it can still be added while it is in the rocket garden. Based on what we see now, Booster 16 will probably stay where it is until it is moved to the launch pad to join Ship 37. The reason for moving Booster 16 became clear in the afternoon of August 6th. Soon after it was placed in the rocket garden, Booster 12 was moved back into the large assembly building. This means Booster 16 was moved to make space for Booster 12. It is very unlikely that Booster 12 will be used again. When an old booster is brought back inside, it usually means it will be taken apart. Booster 12 has a special place in Starship's history. It was used for Flight 5, the first time SpaceX tried to catch a booster using the tower arms. This makes it a historic piece of hardware that could be kept at Starbase or in a museum. But as a version 1 booster, it no longer fits the needs of the program. Taking it apart will let SpaceX reuse materials, free up storage, and use parts for newer boosters. It is a practical choice, even if it feels a bit sad. Booster 12 marked the start of Starship's recovery and reuse work, which is an important step in the program. The move of Booster 16 also suggests that more changes are coming. Right now, the large assembly building holds Booster 12, Booster 15, and Booster 18. 
there is still room for one or two more boosters. Many watchers think this means that Booster 19, the first version 3 prototype, will soon be built. This makes sense because SpaceX is getting close to finishing flights with version 1 and version 2 hardware. Only two of these older versions remain. This could mean that the first version 3 launch might happen later this year. Booster 18 is almost ready to be stacked, and Ship 39 is already in the Star Factory waiting to be matched with a booster. SpaceX needs to keep building quickly to match its busy launch plans for 2026, which could be a key year for Starship. After talking about Booster 12, it is also time to honor another important figure in spaceflight. Astronaut Butch Wilmore has retired after 25 years at NASA. He flew in four different spacecraft and spent 464 days in space. He also took part in five spacewalks, spending more than 32 hours outside in space. His career is filled with achievements that few astronauts ever reach. His final spaceflight took place in 2024 as the commander of Boeing's long-anticipated Starliner crewed test flight. From the very start, the mission faced a series of technical and operational setbacks, with issues arising both during the voyage in space and in pre- and post-flight procedures on the ground. Despite these difficulties, Wilmore and his fellow astronaut, Sunita Williams, maintained their composure, handling each challenge with professionalism and focus. Ultimately, an unexpected change of plans required them to conclude their journey aboard SpaceX's Crew Dragon spacecraft, demonstrating the critical importance of having reliable backup systems and the ability to adapt quickly when things do not go as planned in the unforgiving environment of space. Leaders at NASA praised Wilmore's work. They said his dedication to human space exploration has made a lasting mark and will inspire future astronauts. Wilmore himself spoke about how his love for exploration began with looking up at the sky as a child. He said that going to space made him even more aware of the beauty of both the universe and life on Earth. Wilmore's retirement comes as the Artemis II crew gets ready for their mission to orbit the moon. The crew includes Reed Wiseman, Victor Glover, Christina Koch, and Jeremy Hansen. Their flight is planned for as early as February 2026, on July 31st, they completed their first full test in spacesuits inside the powered Orion spacecraft at Kennedy Space Center. This test checked life support systems, communications, and emergency procedures in conditions like those during the mission. The crew also practiced storing equipment, adjusting to new sleep cycles, and learning Orion's layout for the 10-day trip. These preparations follow delays caused by issues from the Artemis I mission. But now... With Orion powered up and training in progress, confidence in the mission is growing. The next steps include connecting Orion to the Space Launch System rocket, moving it to the launch pad, and carrying out final tests. Each step brings Artemis II closer to launch and humanity closer to returning to lunar orbit. Big things are coming. Between Starship's progress, Artemis's preparations, and the retirement of space veterans, the future of spaceflight looks very active.